third and final chapter of this web-based training, you find out about the functional principle of the UPS 1600 System Integrated Uninterruptible Power Supply. This supplies the connected loads with 24 volt for a certain period in the event of a power failure. Depending on the type and number of the battery modules used, as well as the load current, buffer periods up to several hours are possible. After working through this chapter, you will be able to configure a UPS 1600 independently in the tier portal and to use the diagnostics options of the device. A power failure means not only the failure of the 24 volt power supply, but also a failure of the automation system. This results in cost intensive outage times and undefined plant states. The UPS 1600 DC UPS module prevents such failures by supplying the 24 volts with the help of the connected UPS 1100 battery modules. As well as engineering and the tier portal, the UPS 1600 offers comprehensive operating and diagnostics data that can be further processed in the Symatic S7 via Ethernet or Profinet and visualized in WinCC. The highlight is full integration into TIA. Apart from this, remote diagnostics are also possible via the integrated web server. Battery management is one of the most important tasks. The UPS 1600 automatically detects the connected battery modules via the energy storage link and charges them with the optimum temperature controlled charging characteristic. Intelligent battery management monitors all the relevant data, also in the case of battery modules connected in parallel. The Ethernet Profinet interface is used to output the battery status and various up to date values such as voltage, current, and residual capacity. The UPS 1600 has a dynamic overload characteristic and can thus also supply 24 volt loads with high inrush currents, as well as industrial PCs, for example. The high charging current for the battery modules quickly restores buffer readiness after a power failure. And for use in isolated operation, the UPS 1600 can be activated without input voltage with the help of the battery modules to enable machines to be powered up or switched on, for example. One of the highlights of the UPS 1600 is problem-free integration into the tier portal. The next lesson shows you the engineering of the UPS 1600 in the tier portal step by step using a sample project. The starting situation for the example project is as follows. A project has already been created in the tier portal. An S7 1500 controller with the CPU 1516 has already been configured on the hardware side. The following steps take you through the configuration, starting with the installation of the hardware support package, continuing with the insertion and configuring of the UPS 1600 in the tier portal, assigning a device name, and finally downloading the configuration. Open the tier portal software. The current version of the hardware support package must be loaded into the tier portal if the UPS 1600 has not yet been integrated. This can be downloaded free from the Siemens online support website. You will find the selection of support packages under the menu command Tools. A dialog box opens with a selection of locally stored support packages. Let us assume that the installation package of the UPS 1600 is not yet available locally and that you have to load it into the tier portal. Use the Add from File System button for this purpose. Find the corresponding support package that you previously downloaded from the support site and saved on your PC and open it. The uploaded package is now visible in the list. Select the package and click Install. Follow the installation instructions by clicking Continue. Complete the installation by clicking Finish. Make sure to then restart the tier portal to avoid errors in execution. On the right hand side of the tier portal window, the selection of SITOP UPS 1600 in the versions 10 amps, 20 amps, and 40 amps appears within the hardware catalog tree under Power Supplies. The UPS 1600 is now ready for configuration. We are now starting the second engineering step. 
inserting the UPS 1600 and subsequent configuring in the tier portal. The sequence is as follows. You have already installed the UPS 1600 in your tier portal project as a hardware support package, and you now start to transfer it from the hardware catalog to the editor. In the second step, you assign the UPS 1600 to an S7 controller in the editor. Finally, you add a battery module to the UPS 1600. Click the play button in the player for a detailed view of the insertion of the UPS 1600 into the tier portal. Simulation takes place without any spoken commentary. You can pause the simulation and move backwards and forwards within it. After the UPS 1600 and an associated battery module have been integrated into the TIA project, the UPS 1600 must be parameterized. Parameterization takes place here via the properties of the UPS 1600 and from there via the General tab. The following parameter assignments are necessary. In the first step, Select the UPS 1600 by clicking on the graphic in the editor. To change the name of the device, select the Properties tab in the Device Data area and then select General in the General area. Assign the name of the UPS 1600 in the relevant field. The name DC UPS 10A used in the example is also used as the Profinet device name. For the Profinet interface, you can adapt the IP address of the device accordingly in the Ethernet address area. You set the parameters for the UPS in the device configuration area. In the example, the buffer time is set to 60 seconds. You can set the wait time after which the alarm is to be transmitted following power failure. In this example, 125 milliseconds. In the energy storage area, add the battery modules and set the relevant parameters. In addition, you can activate the UPS 1600 web server. The web server is deactivated as the default. Set a check mark to activate it. After you have adapted all the parameters, save the project in the tier portal. In the delivery state of the UPS 1600, only the factory settings are loaded. For this reason, the Profinet device name must be assigned to the UPS 1600 before use. Initially, you are in the device view of the UPS 1600. To assign a name, work through the following steps. First, open the Assign Device Name dialog. Assign the Profinet device name within the screen form. Then select the type and the PG-PC interface. Finally, select the corresponding UPS 1600 device from the list, click the play button in the player for a detailed view of the name assignment of the UPS 1600 in the tier portal. Simulation takes place without any spoken commentary. You can pause the simulation and jump backwards and forwards. The principle of downloading the parameters is extremely simple, and the download can be carried out in two basic steps. The graphic below briefly explains this principle. You then have the option of following this procedure in the tier portal. Initially, the configuration data are transferred by the programming device from step 7 to the controller. This is initiated by the configuring engineer. The controller then transfers these data automatically to the UPS. This is the basic principle of downloading the parameters. 
Download of the parameters in the tier portal is completed by the following steps. Initially, you must open the extended download dialog of the controller. In this dialog, you set the interface parameters. Then you select the controller from the list. Now start the download. Now stop the controller and complete the download. Click the play button in the player for a detailed view of downloading the parameters of the UPS 1600 in the tier portal. Simulation takes place without any spoken commentary. You can pause the simulation and jump backwards and forwards. For diagnostics and maintenance purposes, you can use free of charge faceplates which allow you to display information about the status and alarms. For example, you call up information about the status of the DC UPS and you can display the device information, track the progress of the voltages and the current in the trend chart, or have access to the alarms display. You have option of detecting the status of the controller and the UPS 1600 in the tier portal. You can also make diagnoses in the event of faults. To do so, change to the Network View tab in the Editor window. Then switch both devices online using the Connect Online button. Either the UPS 1600 or the S7 1500 must be selected for this purpose. The statuses of the S7 1500 and the UPS 1600 are displayed. The green check mark indicates that both devices are working problem free. In the event of a fault, the relevant fault messages are displayed in the lower window on the Device Information tab. You can also display diagnoses about fault messages via the web server. The web server must be activated for this purpose. After entering the IP address of the UPS 1600 in the address line of Internet Explorer, a page with login information appears. Log in here with Administrator and use the password Admin. In the Login window, you have the option of viewing the sent alarms or the status of the added battery modules. Buff mode in the event of a power failure is a possible scenario for using the UPS 1600. The display of your faceplates shows you the following. As soon as a power failure has been registered, the state of the UPS changes to buffer mode, indicated using an alarm box colored yellow. In the trend chart, it can be seen that the input voltage, represented by the green line, suddenly drops. This shows the time of the power failure. However, the output voltage, represented by the black line, remains the same. This shows that the battery modules of the UPS 1600 take over buffer mode for the period of the power failure. Under alarms, you can see the exact time of day and the status. Further fault scenarios that are reported and represented in a similar way are listed below. Battery module not available. This fault is reported if a battery is not available when an attempt is made to access it. Either the battery with the requested number is not connected or communication with this battery has failed. Insufficient battery charge or battery exhausted. The battery charge level is too low to ensure the configured buffer capacity. Buffer mode is not possible. If this message is received, the settings, wiring and fuse must be checked. Incorrect software update. In this case, the update file is incorrect, damaged or obsolete. Device temperature critical. This message is displayed if temperatures inside the device reach the limit range because the device could exit the permissible operating range. 
overcurrent at the DC UPS output. In this case, the output current of the DC UPS is too high. The output is switched off for 20 seconds and switched on again. You can find other fault scenarios, as well as detailed information and detailed product descriptions of the UPS 1600 in the relevant manual. What steps must you take to be able to insert a UPS 1600 into the tier portal? What parameter settings are necessary for using the UPS 1600? What options does the web server offer you? What are the main points that you have learned in this chapter? Take a little time to review the main aspects. Congratulations! You have completed the tutorial program SITOP Power Supplies with Full Tier Integration and now possess the appropriate basic knowledge. We wish you every success in using the knowledge you have gained.